Today I'm going to be doing an experiment. I have this old 20 gigabyte Seagate hard drive, um, and I'm going to subject it to a series of torture tests using magnets. I have these small neodymium magnets that I'll start with. When that fails to ruin the hard drive, I will step it up to this larger, more powerful neodymium magnet. And when all else fails, I'll be using this electromagnet made from a microwave oven transformer. All right, just to give you an idea how powerful this is. Yeah. So first things first, I kind of want to get an idea of how strong these magnets are, but they're so wildly different that I can't really get a, a, a good reading on all of them using the same scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how close I have to put my phone to get this needle to the center. So at 480, my, uh, what is it called, magnetometer is at the top of my phone here. Okay, and I'm going to measure the number of centimeters I am away from the magnet, just from the top edge of my phone here, to get an idea. So, let's move the other magnets away, and I have the small neodymium magnets. So that is about, I'll just call that two and a half centimeters. Now, this magnet, oof. looking at yeah, about seven and a half, a little over seven and a half. Now, I have this hooked up to a 24 volt DC power supply. I might move the camera back a bit, move my laptop away. Okay. And Oh boy, hey yeah. <laughs> Time to move the camera up. All right. All right, here goes. That is 20 and a half, 20 and one half centimeters away. It is 480 micro Tesla. To test the hard drive each time, I'm going to use a script that I wrote. Um, and when the script is done, it'll play some music. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is get a baseline test before I start applying any magnets. Okay, device SDB. And now, mag test one, which is baseline. And there we go. took about 21 minutes. So I have results dash meg test and I can do hello low calc results. So this is what my test result looks like. Test one, start date and time, end date and time. The description is baseline. Bad blocks test was good. Health, 0% uh, errors. Read performance. Copy one gigabyte, 21 megabytes per second. And this is the checksum of the file and the image file right here. So, the next step is to do a bunch of terrible things to the hard drive and then repeat these tests and see how it changes things. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do 
I'm gonna use these small neodymium magnets and I'm gonna try to put them somewhere near the center of the, uh, uh, you know, where the first sectors of the disc are. Uh, and I'm going to put it on there for three seconds and remove it. And now we will run another test. All right, now I'm going to pass the magnet over the hard drive. I'm going to sort of move it all around. Spin it like that. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, so for test three, I'm going to pass these magnets over the drive while it's on and while I'm reading uh, reading from the disk. So I'm gonna start reading from the disk. I need my password. Okay, it's reading. Now I'm going to move on to the more powerful magnet, and I'm just going to set it on there for three seconds. Okay, next test is to take the magnet and wipe it over the hard drive. pretty strong. Let's see how that goes. Alright, and now I'm going to use the medium magnet while the disc is reading. Okay, and it should be reading now. Ooh, whoa. Definitely heard something there. Oh. Hope you can hear that. It slows down when I put the magnet right on that spot. Well, okay. Let's just do our normal tests and see what happens. Wow, this is hot. At this point, the bad blocks command hung and wouldn't continue on to the other steps in the test. I modified my script so that if I control C on one of the steps, it still continues on to the next one. The bad blocks test never worked again after this. Alright, I've now moved everything away from the magnet, and we're going to start using this thing. Alright, three seconds with the big electromagnet. Okay, and we are now going to do a test eleven. All right, now that I have this sick and twisted torture set up, let's try this out. Oh boy. Oh man, it's really just going to damage it from smashing it. Ugh. Let's try this. Ugh. 
So that's what I've done. I'm gonna see if I can pass it over like this. So I have a piece of MDF board. I'm gonna use that and it's gonna let me move the hard drive over the magnet. Alright, turning on the magnet. That checksum is the same, I'm gonna be very surprised. Well, it's gonna change a lot of assumptions that I've made. Oh. I see IDE light not turning on. So this disc will hopefully work, because then that means I don't have to buy another one of these things. Oh boy, did I screw that up? I managed to screw this thing up. Did I? Jeez, man. Oh, holy heck, man. So that's really interesting because the adapter wasn't even close to it. Um, jeez. Everything else around here is okay. Alright, only a couple days later I have a new adapter. Alright, so now let's give this thing a test. Okay, now I'm going to give this a go while the hard drive is spinning up with the really big magnet. When I flip the switch, they're both gonna turn on. So the hard drive's gonna spin and the magnet's gonna turn on. Here it's spinning. test on it too, I guess. <laughs> Yeesh. Oh, here, clicking. See if you can hear that. Definitely hear the read-write head moving around, struggling to even read anything. That's pretty much a click of death. So this hard drive, the read-write head, is failing to read the disk. So given the fact that this thing has survived many, many attacks with the magnets, and every time that I was able to read the disk, there were absolutely no bits changed on the disk. That checksum was the same every time. I suspect that the read-write head is failing, and maybe it crashed into the disk and, and caused a scratch, so we would lose some data, but at this point, I expect that the magnetic field did not actually corrupt any data. The only reason we can't read this disk is because of the, the read-write mechanism. So if someone were to do a platter transplant from this disk into another one, then that data would be recoverable. So I guess we've done all the testing we can do to this hard drive. Alright, so let's review the data from our tests. Let's see. <clears throat> see no appreciable difference in read times. 
I see no errors from the uh, health check. After doing the, the uh, medium magnet while reading the disc, I began having issues with the bad blocks command. Over time, I see no real difference in the write speed and no data was compromised at all. So that's a bit, uh, that's a bit surprising. But I guess it kind of makes sense because the bits are so densely packed that sort of the amount of magnetic flux going through that amount of surface area is negligible. So this really speaks to the integrity of hard disk drives. All the choices I could make, the most fun is this one. All right, I was taking the other side apart and I just noticed this. There's a burn mark here and this Texas Instruments, see if I can get a good shot of that, has a big hole blown in it. All right, so I actually found out it is the spindle motor controller and the voice coil motor controller, um, this chip right here. And the voice coil is just the, the coil that controls the read right head movement. All right, so quickly I'm going to try to describe to you what the uh, script does. So I have this script called MagTest. Um, look at that. But essentially it's going to save the results of the various tests to a CSV file. Uh, the first test is going to be a bad blocks test. Then I'm going to do a smart test. Uh, and then I do a read performance using HDParm. Uh, and then I will write a file, a one gigabyte file, to the disk. Now the first gigabyte of the disk space is going to be the read section. So there's a bunch of random bits that I've written to that section, and each test I'm going to read that section. The second gigabyte of the disk is covered with zeros, and I have a file, which is just a bunch of random bits that I'm going to write to the disk in that section for write performance. Um, and then, I get an image here. I get an image of those two gigabytes, so the read section and the write section, and I save that to a file. Um, and then I'll, I'll clear the write section of zeros again. And then I get an MD5 sum of that file. So if there are any changes to the bits in the read or write section, then I will know the difference because that checksum will be different. And then in the end, I write everything to the CSV file, and then play a sound. Hey there. All right, and just real quick, I took apart the, uh, the old USB adapter, um, and it doesn't have any visible damage, although there's a lot of flux around it. It looks like there's some terrible soldering done. Looks like, looks like I put it together. <laughs>